Welcome to Grad School Life by PhD Balance, a new segment of Grad Chat where we speak to graduate students about their behind the scenes day to day lives and their programs. I'm your host, Linda Corcoran, and I'm currently finishing up my master's in food science in Ireland. And for PhD Balance, I'm the Grad Chat lead and a Twitter coordinator. Today, I'm very excited to be welcomed by, um, to be joined by Suyash, who is the PhD Balance social media director head of social media. I don't know what your title is, but um, why don't you introduce yourself, Suyash? Hi, I'm Suyash. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I am a PhD student studying in ISD Austria, uh, studying the developmental physics of zebrafish embryos and how their epithelia develop during ep development. And uh, for PhD balance, I am kind of the coordinator between all of our social media tiny teams and I help like create posts and schedule them for our social media and interact with some of our community sometimes when I have the mental space for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so welcome. Thank you so much for doing an awesome introduction. So um, I think you're the first guest who is not in North America. So <laughs> Welcome. Hashtag India represent. <laughs> no, that was horrible. <laughs> but yeah, I'm joining in from India, which is probably very far away from all of the previous hosts. It's also 9 a.m., 9 p.m. for me, and I'm kind of tired from my day. That's, that's fair. Time zones. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, what I guess to start, what is your program? You, I know you're doing a PhD in Austria, but what is your program called? And um, is it like a PhD in biology? I uh, selected my program because I was kind of interested in this particular section of science, or like uh, studying like development with. Uh, with an idea of physics and kind of do a bit of experiments and theoretical modeling, although I'm not really trained or knowledgeable about the theory, the theoretical physics so much, which is something that I'm learning for my PhD. And I kind of have a collaboration and I work in two different labs, one which is experimental and one which is theoretical. And I try to combine the knowledge and expertise that each of these labs have in to my project and yeah and kind of uh, it's just a normal PhD grad like a PhD school uh, mm. which has like a five year program of PA that you are affiliated with. So did you apply to a program or a project? Because uh, I, I know applied. yeah so no, it, it's just sometimes in Europe, it can be different to what it looked like in the US and what we hear about. Yeah. Uh, so the system that I have in my institute is kind of similar to the ones that is you hear about more from the US side of things. So unlike a European PhD, the program is actually slightly longer and you have like the first year that you do rotations with different kind of groups so that you can have an idea of like which groups that you want to join. And for my first, like first, in the first year you do that and then you have a qualifying exam that you kind of pass to be qualified to do your PhD. So I applied to this program knowing that, okay, I had these few PIs that I was interested in working with and uh, in, in like kind of not having a specific project, but knowing sort of the field that I was going to be in. That's fair. That's a bit unusual for Europe. We usually do well, it depends on the discipline, but we usually do project based ones rather than program. Um, but that is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think it is, uh, it, it is It is. kind of more freeing, but also at the same time, a little bit uh, less secure because like in Europe, whenever you usually mention doing a PhD, it is like three years or something around that. And this program usually takes like four or more, more realistically five to six years. Uh, mm. and but it, it, the freedom is something that I quite enjoy and the ability to like do various different things. That's great. Um, and um, I guess 
why did you decide to apply to grad school in the first place and what did you think it was going to be like? Uh, I'm not exactly sure why I decided to apply for grad school. I was always quite interested in like doing basic research and I have been like doing stuff in the lab for quite a long time. Uh, the coolest thing about where I did my undergrad from was the fact that we could kind of substitute one of our classes to actually work in the lab. And I kind of had the opportunity to work like on an actual project for most of my undergraduate uh, program. And yeah, it was more or less kind of, uh, I wanted to learn more about uh, theoretical physics and how to use uh, physics to understand biological systems in a very live interactive way is kind of what I wanted to do for my PhD and that's why I started uh, my PhD program in Germany. Awesome. Um, so what does your day-to-day -day actually look like? Um, like usually I'm very chaotic as you may already know. Uh, I, I do not have like a very set routine, but usually I get to the lab in the morning. The morning is uh, getting fishes because fish have a circadian clock that make them lay only in specific hours in the morning. So it's getting fishes like doing like injections or something with them. And then I have like an hour or two for myself, depending on how, what I'm going to do where I usually have my lunch and grab a quick gym break. And then uh, it's either setting up my microscope and letting the imaging run or getting to some uh, you know, experiments. Uh, there are some days where I don't do any experiments where I have like analysis days. And those are the days that I usually are co-working like uh, either organizing the co-working sessions or uh, being in one of them working with people and analyzing something on the side and it's like a like ideally i would have 60 40 10 with like reading in this 10 which is yeah i know the math doesn't make sense but that is exactly the math that makes sense <laughs> uh, for my no 100 percent get it. it it's it, there is no 100 percent. it's like 60 percent lab 40 percent computer work and then it's like reading on top of that or um learning or on top of that or <laughs> something else <laughs> but um great that you mentioned co-working on our discord platform which anyone can join and we do stru structured co-working from time to time you can see it if you join our discord under the events channel and if you don't want to go to structured co-working you can drop in anytime you want and usually there is someone on who is interested in co-working and it's just yeah. an accountability <laughs> Exactly. And that has been so useful for me, especially during the pandemic years, like being someone who cannot focus for more than 20 minutes at a stretch, having someone like having a set goal that I'm going to do in this one study block and then talking to someone after that kind of helps make this entire process of like sitting alone and studying and doing something so much more bearable in life. So I would heartily recommend. And this is not because like, I'm a part of it, like I'm a part of PhD balance kind of because I love co-working so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. And like, we love having you. So, <laughs> um, but yes, and it's, it's co-working is body doubling in a way. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, when you um, pretend when, well, not when you pretend when you have someone working there. So it makes you work. <laughs> Okay. And you feel motivated because like someone else is doing it, so I should do it. And I did, and then it becomes a competition or like a friendly, like motivation thing. And like you see someone else doing a good job and that kind of like puts you out from your own set of like whatever yeah, is going on in your own head <laughs> as well. Very fair. And I guess um, one of the last questions I have for you, which may not be a good question, is what do you want to do next? It's okay to say, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Like, <laughs> I have so many things that interest me and like, unlike necessarily 
uh, in the past, I don't necessarily want to do the same things that I've been doing. And I have no idea. I just want to see where I land. I do want to continue doing things that like spark my curiosity and don't make me feel bored because that is not something I like in life. And I'll let you know when I figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> That is very fair. I think I'm very similar in that aspect. It's like, I want something I enjoy. There's too many things I enjoy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's kind of a different question is, what is something that you do on a daily basis or a weekly basis that gives your PhD life balance? There are quite a few things. Um, uh, the top ones that I would like to mention is like, uh, that have helped me in the past, uh, uh, like working out is something that I keep as a very strong core part of my daily routine. I mean, not a daily routine, but like a weekly routine. And that includes like either doing something in the gym or going out for a hike or something of that sort. Uh, it started off with like trying to, uh, it started off uh, with like friends and trying to catch up to uh, them, which then like blossomed into a hobby of my own and like a very good connection with my friends uh, that we share a hobby together of sorts. Uh, other than that, I also like to uh, make art and like be creative and doing content for social media for uh, PhD balance is a great way to like regularly keep doing some of that. I'm also currently trying to learn how to design a website uh, and want to like have a blog of my own where I write about random things that I think about or random papers that I need and ideas that I get or like podcasts that I listen to and ideas that I get or something of that sort. Uh, the problem with that yet currently is more to do with like keeping a track of all of the things that I want to do rather than doing the things that I want to do <laughs> and structuring them in a way that I can do the things that I want to do, which is always a, a, a difficulty. But yeah, this year I've like started getting medicated for my ADHD, which is, has been difficult. But hopefully once I have that under control, I'm going to be super productive. <laughs> and I'd say okay. that with the heaviest looking sarcasm ever. <laughs> <laughs> great and um last question very last question i promise where can our listeners find you if they would like to get in touch with you uh i'm suyash sweet uh on uh instagram and uh suyash night six on twitter and i would be happy to chat with anyone on either of those platforms hopefully i'll have my website stuff sorted out and if i do i just send you <laughs> Awesome. We will link both of those in the description. So anyone who wants to get in touch with you can. And um, that is everything. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. This has been Grad School Live by PhD Balance. Episodes are posted every second Thursday on YouTube and all major streaming platforms. Don't forget to subscribe to get notifications about new episodes. And if you feel like it, maybe leave us a rating or review. It helps people find us. And um, that is it. Until next time. Goodbye and take care of yourselves.